stretch cruisers combine the legendary capabilities of the Toyota Land Cruiser with the space of a minibus for the ultimate Namibian touring experience. The pandemic paused tours worldwide and afterwards stretch cruisers were suddenly in very short supply. Awesome Chapters found itself in a situation where it had a tour booked but was unable to rent a stretch cruiser for this tour as they were all fully booked. There was an interesting option though in that there was a stretch cruiser for sale. It had been neglected for a long time and was in poor condition but with some months remaining before the start of the tour there may be enough time to fix it up. The other option would be to cancel the tour and nobody wants to do that. But would the time remaining be enough to restore this vehicle? I was offshore for the purchase and mechanical repairs needed for it to pass the roadworthy test and be registered to awesome chapters. The braking system was overhauled and handbrake fitted. New shocks and tires were fitted and when it was finally registered, only three weeks remained before the start of the tour. The only crew that were up to the mammoth task of completely restoring the body in three weeks were the heroes at Shape and Auto. Many late nights were to follow and as I was ashore for this, I could document the process. On the day the car went into the shop, it was in a really sorry state. The many layers of paint was peeling badly and there were visible signs of rust. At the end of the first day into the project, the vehicle was already mostly stripped down and the process of hunting down the rust had already started. With the seats removed, it was time to remove the old paint. As the paint was enamel that cannot be painted over, paint stripper and loads of manual labor was used. Wasting no time, new metal was being welded in where the rust was cut away. At the end of the day, there were signs of progress. The paint was mostly stripped away and the new metal already covered in body filler to prevent new rust forming. Getting rid of the paint was well underway and prep work had started to attack the rust around the front window. The interior looked like a war zone and huge amount of work still needed to be done there. New metal was needed where the rust had broken through around the front window, while in the back more serious tools were being used to get down to the bare metal. In short order, the metal was welded in and covered with body folder to fix in the gains that were made. The mess this process causes is quite impressive. Primer prepares the bodywork for the next exciting step in the process, namely painting. The area around the front window came out pretty nice as well. The inside was still covered in glue from the floor matting and miles away from paint. At the end of the day, with the car inside again, I could admire the handiwork. The swirls the grinder made actually looks pretty funky and some people would just clear coat it and call it a day. After the weekend, the vehicle already sported a new coat of tough guard over the cab area and final sealing was being done around the edges. 
color does not really matter at this stage as the tough card will be getting a coat of white automotive paint over the top. Speaking of color, the front doors still had the horrible orange color and some rust was also showing at the bottom of the door. The passenger doors had been primed and taped up, ready for paint, and the body was in the process of getting taped up too. As this paint is textured and incredibly tough, you don't want it to get anywhere where you have to remove it later. Designed for lining the low beds of pickups, this two-part paint comes in black or tintable off-white. As we were going to paint standard Toyota white over the top, we went for the tintable variant on the outside. the sheer size of the cab, quite a bit of product was used and it can't be mixed ahead of time. With the cab coming along nicely, the orange doors were patiently waiting on their turn for attention. Drummings and underbody were next in line as the cab exterior was finally completed. Under the body there was amazingly little rust for a coastal car and the protective underbody coating could be applied as well as the steps into the cab measured for fitment. The prime coats on the doors were all baking in the sun waiting for flatting and final cut. The steps still needed some final measuring and adjustment before being welded onto the body. At eight days to the tour, the final coat was on the doors and front panels. After some polish, it really looked nice. Okay. Out on the ramp, the protective underbody had been applied, 
with the panels off, it was a golden opportunity to also coat the areas that you can never reach normally. <laughs> it has been a pretty crazy time with many late nights and a chock full schedule, but it was paying off and we were getting optimistic about making the deadline for the tour. The interior was coming along nicely and the doors could also now be fitted. on the edges is just enough to round off the vehicle for a stylish look. The bonnet and accessories were ready and awaiting fitment. I like how it looks. Yeah, it looks Five days to the tour, the final bits were coming together. New lights were fitted in the back and the mini seats were finally ready to go in. Except the back row, which was made removable so that it can be swapped for a second fridge if required. The top front window went in and the nuts for the seat bolts had been welded in as well. The front seats were next to be fitted and the engine bay cleaned up. A dual battery system was fitted to handle the fridges and then it was time to test it all at a shakedown drive. some friends to Ghana, which is 120 kilometers from Balfour's Bay, with a fair amount of badly corrugated roads. This represents the typical condition that the car would be used in. She was amazingly soft on the corrugations, and in no time we were at our destination. Gunup is dry and hot as it is fairly deep in the desert with absolutely beautiful grassland landscapes. Checking over the vehicle, we found no major issues and then proceeded to have a lovely little barbecue in this beautiful location. Satisfied that everything was in order, we made our way home. But everything was not in order. The car only completed the first half of the tour and then had to be replaced due to mechanical issues. The issues were not too serious and soon we were able to take the vehicle for a test drive through the sandy dunes just south of Office Bay while our other seven-seater car took care of the rest of the tour. The dunes south of Office Bay are a favorite playground for the locals of Office Bay and is used extensively for people taking the dogs for a stroll or just enjoying the desert in general.
Thank you for watching this entire video. I read and reply to the comments, so feel free to comment on this video. If you liked this video, hit the like button to let YouTube know. And if you would like to be notified of more of my content, please consider subscribing.